I woke up to the peculiar sensation of soft fabric caressing my skin, the air filled with the earthy scent of the forest floor. As my eyes fluttered open, the canopy above seemed to dance in the light that filtered through the leaves. Confused, I sat up, only to find myself in a situation that was beyond my wildest dreams, or rather, nightmares. I was wearing a dress, a bright yellow, short dress that flared around my thighs. A matching yellow bow adorned my head, and to my utter disbelief, my hair was blonde, cascading down my shoulders in waves I never had. Beside me, stirring to consciousness, was Mike, my best friend since childhood. The sight before me would have been hilarious under different circumstances. Mike, with his usually short, brunette hair, now had long locks, and was dressed in a pink dress with a sleeveless top, the fabric hugging his. No, her body in a way that was unfamiliar yet unmistakably real. We looked at each other, eyes wide with shock, our mouths agape. This couldn't be happening. We both began to frantically inspect ourselves, confirming the horrifying truth, our bodies had changed completely. We were no longer men, somehow, we had transformed into women. As we tried to process this bewildering reality, the sound of footsteps approached. Panic set in, were we about to be discovered like this? By whom? The answer came in the form of our girlfriends, emerging through the trees with an air of nonchalance that was entirely at odds with the situation. They didn't seem surprised to find us in our current states. Instead, there was a hint of amusement in their eyes, mixed with pride. Welcome to your new reality, said my girlfriend, her voice tinged with a mischievous lilt that sent shivers down my spine. Mike's girlfriend stood beside her, a grin spreading across her face. We are witches, my girlfriend continued, as if that would explain everything. And we have chosen you two to be the next princesses in the fairy tale world we come from. Mike and I exchanged glances, our minds racing. This had to be a joke, a very elaborate, very unsettling joke. But as they began to explain, the reality of our situation sank in. They spoke of their true identities, of a world where magic reigned supreme, and of a prophecy that foretold the arrival of two princesses from another world, us. Our initial shock gave way to a barrage of questions. Why us? How could we possibly fulfill such a role? And, more pressingly, could we ever change back? Our girlfriends, no, our guardians in this new reality, assured us that we had been chosen for our strength, our bond, and our capacity to adapt and overcome. They promised to guide us, to teach us the ways of magic and royalty so we might thrive in our new roles. As the initial shock faded, a sense of adventure began to take its place. This was beyond anything we could have imagined, a chance to live in a storybook world, to experience magic firsthand. And yet, the weight of our new responsibilities loomed large. The days that followed were a whirlwind of learning and adjustment. We were taught to walk, talk, and act like princesses, to harness the magic that now flowed through our veins, and to navigate the complexities of court life in a realm where fantasy was reality. As the days melted into weeks, Mike and I found ourselves slipping more comfortably into our roles as princesses. The initial disbelief and discomfort gave way to a sense of belonging and even pride in our new identities. We began to appreciate the finer details of our transformation, the elegance of the dresses we wore, and the grace with which we were now able to carry ourselves. The dresses, once a source of shock and awkwardness, became a symbol of our new status. I found myself admiring the way the fabric of my yellow dress swished around my legs as I moved, the soft material feeling like a second skin. Mike, in her pink dress, carried herself with an elegance that I never knew could come from us. We learned to appreciate the way these garments made us feel, powerful, dignified, and undeniably feminine. Our daily routines were filled with lessons in etiquette, diplomacy, and governance, interspersed with training in the magical arts. Our girlfriends, our guides in this fantastical world, were patient teachers, always ready with encouragement or a helping hand. They shared stories of the kingdom's history, of battles fought and alliances forged, and of the powerful magic that protected the realm. Through their eyes, we saw the world in a new light, one filled with wonder and possibility. As we adapted to our new lives, we discovered a newfound appreciation for the comfort and beauty that surrounded us. 
The castle, with its towering spires and lush gardens, became a home. The people, once strangers, now greeted us with smiles and bows, accepting us as their princesses, their protectors. The grace with which we were expected to carry ourselves became second nature. We danced at balls with a fluidity and confidence that surprised even ourselves, our movements a testament to our transformation. We held court, listening to the concerns of our subjects with empathy and wisdom beyond our years. And in the quiet moments, we explored the depths of our magic, weaving spells that brought joy and prosperity to the land. As the days turned to weeks, and weeks into months, Mike, now known as Princess Michelle, and I found ourselves caught in a whirlwind of unforeseen emotions. The transformation that had once united us in wonder and camaraderie now sowed seeds of rivalry between us. We learned of a decree from the elders of the magical realm, only one could ascend to the throne as queen, while the other would have to return to the real world, their memories of this place and their time here erased as if it were but a dream. The knowledge of this decree changed everything. What had started as a shared adventure turned into a silent competition. Each of us, in our own way, strived to outshine the other. Princess Michelle, with her elegant pink dresses and newfound grace, became more involved in the kingdom's affairs, her voice a constant presence in the council meetings, her decisions shaping the future of the realm. I, in my vibrant yellow gowns, focused on mastering the magical arts, my spells bringing prosperity and healing to the land, earning the adoration of our subjects. Our evenings, once filled with laughter and shared secrets, became quieter, the space between us widening. The castle, with its sprawling gardens and ancient halls, felt colder, echoes of our uncertainty haunting its corridors. Our guardians watched us with worried eyes, their attempts to counsel us often met with polite dismissals. The competition for the crown, though unspoken, hung heavy in the air. Despite the growing divide, the bond we shared was not easily broken. Late at night, under the cover of darkness, Michelle and I would meet at the edge of the enchanted forest, where the magic ran wild and the stars shone brightest. There, away from the prying eyes of the court, we would talk. It was in these moments, vulnerable and true, that we remembered who we were, who we used to be. We're losing ourselves, Michelle whispered one night, her voice barely audible over the rustling leaves. This isn't what we wanted. I knew she was right. The competition, the envy, it was tearing us apart, changing us into people we barely recognized. We had come to this world together, transformed together, and now we were letting the promise of a crown come between us. It doesn't have to be this way, I replied, my mind racing for a solution. We don't have to let this competition define us. Together, we devised a plan. We would approach the elders, propose a new decree, one that would allow both of us to lead, not as queen and princess, but as co-rulers. It was a bold move, unprecedented in the history of the realm, but we were determined. Our unity, we argued, would be the kingdom's greatest strength. Our diverse strengths and perspectives, when combined, would usher in an era of prosperity and peace unlike any before. The council was hesitant at first, bound by tradition and the laws of old. But our conviction, and the support of our subjects, swayed them. They saw in us not just two princesses vying for a crown, but leaders capable of bringing about real change. The day the decree was announced was one of celebration. The kingdom rejoiced, not for the crowning of a new queen, but for the dawn of a new era, led by two rulers who had chosen love and unity over division. Michelle and I, standing side by side before our people, felt the weight of our decision. It was a promise to each other and to the kingdom, a promise to lead with wisdom, to rule with compassion, and to never let the allure of power come between us again. As co-rulers, we faced challenges and triumphs, our friendship the anchor that held us steady. We learned that true beauty lay not in outward appearances or magical prowess, but in the strength of our bond, in our ability to face the world as one. The magical realm flourished under our joint rule, a testament to the power of unity. And though the path was not always easy, Michelle and I walked it together, our journey a reminder that even in a world of magic, the greatest magic of all is the magic of friendship and love.